Are we allowed to use bad language on this? Sure, as long as it's funny. Okay. We're live. What are you going to say? <laughs> oh, I don't know yet. Just things things were floating Hi, by YouTube. in my head. It's Tab from Freefly and Dave and Chris hey, and Dave. Q. How's it going, guys? And we wanted to do a quick Q and A um, about Moby Carbon, which is this guy right here. So this is, I don't know if it's the world's smallest five-axis gimbal. But I'm just, for the sake of this demo, I'm just going to say it is. I think it is the world's smallest five-axis gimbal. Eh, that's not totally true. There's like a bunch of military gimbals that are five-axis and they're very small. And they're made for a very specific and weird industry. But it's dead. Let me get a new IDX battery. Batteries are um, dead. Sometimes. You want to grab a new IDX battery? Yeah. Thanks. We got to get that guy going again. Uh, anyway, there's some five-axis like military gimbals that are very small that they put on things like the Scan Eagle. Those don't count because they don't create a full cinema quality image like this guy does. So, in Moby Carbon, I can't tilt down right now because there's a controller right there. Okay. This is how you install IDX on the Moby controller for those who are wondering. And it's very important when you do so that you check that level. Make sure you got plenty of <laughs> runtime for a mission critical thing such as a lag, a shoot, any of the above. Let's get this resynced. Okay, we're back up. Um, any questions? Gentlemen? Chris? No? People must be saying something interesting. How do I apply for an internship? You go to freeflysystems.com forward slash careers and tell us something awesome and our wonderful recruiter, Lisa, will review it. All right. Thanks, Lisa. Thanks, Lisa. She's like, don't give out my name. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding, this kid. So this guy is a five axis gimbal, which I claim is the smallest five axis gimbal in the world that shoots footage that is good enough that Hugh wouldn't scoff at it. I'll say that's the disclaimer. Yeah. And for those who don't know what five axis gimbal is, it's kind of like the old gimbals used to be just like your head moving around. Five axis is like your eyeball in your head. So your eyeball does the well, independent thing. So and, uh, yeah, super smooth. I'll explain like the outer axis of this looks very similar to a Moby Pro and that's got th pan tilt and roll axes that drive um, the outer pan tilt and roll. But then as you can see, as I slop this around and see this lens right here, it's moving freely in pan and tilt. So there are limited range axes inside this shroud that are able to very accurately and quickly position the camera in pan and tilt. And so if any vibration or disturbance or any other things that we don't like when we're shooting get through to the camera, those two inner axes are able to compensate it. And then the additional benefit is that the bearings on the pan and tilt inner axis have very low friction. So we're able to very well uh, balance and, and then actuate the camera on this inner axis for kind of maximum pointing accuracy. So this payload or this gimbal, this robot, whatever you want to call it, can actually shoot at a full 240 millimeters on something like a bike with sub-pixel stability. So that means any of, the, any of the normal disturbance inputs that you would get in like downhill mountain biking won't, won't actually show up in the footage. So you can see the zoom range of carbon is um, tight on Hugh's ear there. It's a beautiful ear. And then if I pull out there, that's full wide. So it's a pretty substantial zoom range uh, for the gimbal to stabilize kind of perfectly. Do you have any questions yet? No? Any from you, Chris? Uh, what camera is in there? Okay, good question. Great that's question. A good question. So we recently sent out an update email to all the people who were interested in Moby Carbon. There were a bunch of people who had written in off the website and want, wanted one. Um, we've been developing this product with the A7S series camera, A7S and A7S II. Um, we were planning on moving forward with the A7S II, but it's got sensor stabilization that we found was not great for high acceleration. So we actually just fairly recently decided to the GH5S. So you can see right here is the GH5S, which has more of what I'd say is a solid state sensor. The sensor is rigidly mounted, it can't move around to compensate. Um, so we get a lot better acceleration rejection. And then at the same time, when we were doing that kind of design pair up, 
we decided to switch to the Fuji 20 to 120 lens. So kind of um, uh, the, the changes to the Panasonic allowed us to shoehorn kind of a really nice cinema quality zoom lens with a, you know, a nice focal range of 20 to 120. Um, and it's got integrated focus iris and zoom motors inside carbon. So you can see we've got, we've got iris control We've got focus control, and then we've got zoom control. And kind of a nice new feature here. Um, we've got zoom rate scaling on the joystick. So you can see when I go full stick at full zoom, it goes that fast. But then as I go out, it goes faster to keep, it, it's kind of controlling the pixel motion across the screen, no matter what the zoom is. So it allows you, as you zoom in, to have really good control fidelity automatically without having to adjust your pan and tilt rates. Um, People are happy. Yeah? They like it. Great. It's pretty cool. Uh, we put on the bike and do a couple shots? Yeah, why not? What else should we talk about? Hmm. Oh, use cases. So, basically, I mean, to explain <clears throat> what this thing does differently from a Moby Pro, I would say that a Moby Pro 240 millimeters, you're only going to get perfect stability in the most perfect of circumstances, like a very experienced operator with a perfect setup, blah, blah, blah. With this, um, provided that you don't have like some crazy acceleration input, like a shock or a jolt or a drop or something like that, you're gonna get perfect footage in that full range from 40 to 240 or 20 to 120 on the Fujinon, um, which is really cool yeah. because something like this mounted on a drone. Hi, Cindy. Hey, Cindy. I want this beer. Oh, she's putting the beer in the fridge. It's about that time. I have cold beer. Warm beer's no good. 325 Friday. Cindy's working on beer. <laughs> Cindy, how are your deliverables coming? Uh, my deliverables? I'm delivering this beer. <laughs> <laughs> that was coming out. That was so good. <laughs> Did you talk about the purpose of the shroud? Oh, the shroud is so that when we do these type of shows, people can't see what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> kidding, kidding. Uh, the purpose of the, what is the purpose of the shroud? The purpose of the shroud is to keep air from blowing on the inner axis so that it can achieve a higher bandwidth. The purpose of the shroud also is so that we can try and optimize the aerodynamics of this entire package. <clears throat> We're not that bad of designers that we would make it this shape unless we had to. So this shape is largely dictated by the aerodynamics of the, like if you look at the gimbal from the side, we have to optimize this profile for going sideways in a car or a drone at a very high speed. And that's why it turns out looking a bit like a fat whale. <laughs> what name it? Fudgy the Whale? I think it was Fudgy the Whale. Yeah. Please, everyone forget that name. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, you don't, you know, you, like, I, I, maybe I'm out of touch with food flight customers, but if you had to choose between, like, I'm going to go 10 miles an hour faster for my shots, and have Fudgy the Whale, or I'm gonna go 10 miles an hour slower and have this sleek thing. I mean, I'd take the extra 10 miles an hour for sure. Does everyone agree? Agree. Agree? Great. Yeah. Well, Fudgy the Whale it is. Fudgy wins every time. The real question for an engineer such as David Bloomfield right here is, is there a way to have a beautiful looking shroud and the performance? There is, oh. I think. Okay. It, it, yeah, but that also, would you want it sooner or later? We want it sooner. We want it sooner. Um, what else can I show? So it's got all the, kind of all the features that people are used to interacting with as far as the Movi Pro goes. Um, pan tilt and roll, speed controls, iris, zoom, or iris focus, zoom, joystick. You can adjust the speed of the joystick. Uh, kind of give you a, an idea of the zoom range. Go in on that little ear there. And then in a second, we'll put it on the Land Shark. Were you wiggling it? I was. Good. Yeah. Uh, we'll go put it on the land shark and do a little lap, lap around free fly, and you can see it in motion. Um, so I say, let's transfer it over. I actually can't remember how to do this. I, I can't lift it. You're going to have to do it. Oh, I can lift it. Oh. Or you guys. <laughs> I think I can lift it. Yeah. We both have backs. I injured my back, so I can't. It's all killed right now. Oh, is it? Yep. Okay, so we're good. I'm just gonna cross it.
Uh, so it still uses a toad in the hole quick release, just like Moby Pro. No comments? No. Where are the comments? Oh, she's going to tip forward, I believe. All right. All right. So throw the HDMI back in there. Land shark? Yeah, this is exciting. Talk to this guy for a minute. We have to tell a lot of people about Moby Carbon. About Moby Carbon. Um, it's really fun. It's a great, it's a great device. That's, that's as good as I can do. <laughs> it's really, it's really, let's see, hey Hugh, can we get that on the website by the end of the day? Yes. It's really fun, it's a great device. It is. It's like it's a you drive it around. And it it's does what like, it does. It's like space cam. It's like futuristic. I don't know, matrix thing. Space cam is a thing. It's a great device. <laughs> yeah. Space cam. It's like you can't say space cam. That's true. It's just like you're. It's an omnipotent thing. You just drive it around over bumps and stuff, and you drive it. And it's just like, like God mode. God oh, mode. it's conscious. Yeah. Moby Carbon is conscious. Yeah. Oh. As of one point six. I didn't know that. Sentience. Yeah, I like it. All right, let's drive it. You good? Oh, uh, okay. Hold on, let me get this live again. Are you still riding? I think so. I think oh, boy. I've never done it before. This is a trial by fire here. You ready? People are wondering about single operator. This is actually quite, quite fun. Everyone should want to do this. What is, what's the question about single operator? Uh, will this be able to be operated by a solo op? Yeah, but you'd have some, it'd be tough if you're shooting at those focal ranges on focus. So, you know, just like normal movie pro, it depends on your setup. All right, let's try it a little bit. All right, let's go. So if you guys can film the screen, then people can see. Yep. So, there I'm wide going down this run. And then I'm gonna, uh oh. Hey Dave. We'll just let him go. I'll get some shots, some warehouse shots. Okay, and then you can see I'll punch in here to 240. It's kind of tight on him, but uh, you can't tell. The stability is really good, though. You got a touch there. Dave, go a little slower. What was that? Slower. Slower? Yeah. So I'm going to punch in here to 240. You can see even as he's on the bike, stability looks really great. It looks like an ollie. What distance do you get with the Moby controller? Uh, you get about 1,500 feet range, depending on you know, depending on how saturated the environment is with other RF. Go real slow, Dave. Real slow? Yeah, you can see that nice. So that's at full zoom as Dave's riding. It's just going to kind of slow. Caught on camera, Alex. You're good. Keep going. Alex doesn't know he's being filmed right now. Maybe he does. I'm going to do a wrap up on this one. A wrap? Yeah, on this one. Just because uh, you can't, I can't do the exposure on this and then... That's weird. Yeah. Well, let's not let's not wrap it. Let's just okay go and finish it up. All right. That's nice. Maybe just go to Dave. Yeah. So you can see. Any questions? Where is he? Where is he? Dave, where's your helmet? He's going real slow. Land shark is battery powered.
Corner. Got a limited range, huh? Because it hits. Sways than what? Really? Schwartz Miller style. Schwartz Miller style. Schwartz Miller closed, yeah. Engineering project? Can I get a painted one? Chris, you can get whatever you want. You need an address for Alta. Yes, I do need your address. What fizz motors are in there? They are, they're not like an off the shelf name brand fizz motor. They're tiny little custom Max on motors that we're using there. We plan to put other cameras in Alta. Um, well, it's the GH5S, not the Alta. Uh, this is our office and our testing environment at the same time. Would be perfect for filming aggressive blading. I agree. Would be fun. Um, all right, we're gonna wrap this up. All right, cool. In just a minute. Any last thoughts? Ethan? Oh, uh, Ethan's having a pop tart social at my desk at ooh, four before, before the beer. Social. You are? Yeah. Pop tarts then beer. Let's yeah. go, let's go take a so look gotta, at your your, your, your your tester. So Ethan is having a pop tart social. After seeing you on screen, the, this guy said, what exactly is the minimum age to work at Free Fly? <laughs> how, how old are you, young man? Um, I'm 12. Okay. <laughs> 12 is the minimum age. <laughs> the tough part is, Ethan, if you're 12, then this guy is looking at, like over there next to you. How old are you? <laughs> Alan chimed in and says, looks like a great value at any price. We'll let you know the price soon, Alan. Don't worry. <laughs> So, Ethan's getting ready for a Pop Tart Social. Look at all those. Oh my gosh. Ethan, you bought name brand Pop Tarts. I'm going to buy these for you. Uh, are there non name brand Pop Tarts? Yeah, they yes. probably are. They probably are. It would have definitely if I had seen some. I mean, it must be the same thing. Wow. <laughs> same ingredients. That is funny. Then we got some bagels. Oh man, I'm, I'm jelly. Yeah, you, you're welcome. Well, it's in 20 minutes. I've had one like, since you gave me a piece like a few weeks ago. The future is bright. Oh, you can't have a Pop-Tart. I know, I'm feeling it. You gotta make a calendar invite. Oh, I'll tell you that right now. Yeah. Yeah. No Pop-Tarts. No Pop-Tarts for you? Mm. I hope that's a workplace approved toaster. I don't know what that means. <laughs> toaster. All right. I'm starting to wonder now. All right, we gotta toaster. wrap it up. Hold on, let's check in. Let's check in before we end. Andy? Hi, Sam. How are we doing on Android for Cinema Robot? Of Android, Robot. Holy Remember? shit. Uh, if you'd like to see some, some, some things happen. Yeah, let's see some things happen. Uh, I can pick it up. Oh, I think the Wi Fi destroyed it to lose the gas on the device. Uh, you can double tap to move your reticle across the screen. That's that awesome. Out. Look at that animation. Smooth, uh, silky. And then we're working Beautiful. on Majestic right now, so we're working on adding all this. Recording at uh, 4K, uh, previewing a 1080 on Nexus 5X. So, nice. uh, yeah, we have Soon we'll have a camera that's available on the website that's pointed at Banji. It'll be called the Banji Cam, and it will track the iPhone 
are the Android delivery date. It's a very exciting. That's a wild project. Estimated when Moby Countermates will be in stock in 15 minutes. Um, do you need a German intern from October for three months? I don't think so. But maybe. Send us a message on careers at three places. Uh, all right. That's it. Love carbon. We got Chris S. We got Q. Trash Panda. Secret Raccoon Bell. We got Dave. Hey guys. I don't know what your nickname is anymore. It's changed. I don't, I don't know if the elbow booms are applicable. No. Come up with new nicknames, guys. Who I have some new ones for you. Oh, I can't say that. Anyway, we're signing out for the weekend. Have a good weekend. Bye, everyone.